Today on Bike People, we help riders be informed. We learn about traffic planning and bike boulevards. And we share the urban assault ride where Suzette gets a little tipsy. All that and more straight ahead on Bike People. Bike People is brought to you in part by the Des Moines Bicycle Collective promotes bicycling as a means of active transportation, wellness, and recreation in central Iowa. The Iowa Natural Heritage Foundation, working to protect and restore Iowa's land, water, and wildlife. Bike Iowa, your source for Iowa bicycle rides, events, and news, connecting cycling with Iowa communities since 2001. My name is Forrest. I got my first bike at age three, my next bike at age seven. I've ridden in Europe, Australia, and all across our great nation. My name is Suzette. I'm a mom, TV personality, I have no and bike lover. I've known Forrest for years <laughs> from interviews, rides, and bike events. Things up for rag riders. I'm in the bicycle business and a cycling enthusiast. I've been collecting, fixing, and selling bikes my whole life. We love bikes and all the people, stories, and adventures around them. <laughs> We're on a journey to show you the world through two wheels. To help you become Bike, bike People. Thanks for tuning in to Bike People and welcome to the show. This week is about getting around town on a bike. We talked to Steve from Alta Planning and Design about a bike boulevard. We learn about the B-Cycle program and of course, we go on the Urban Assault Ride. I know you love the Urban Assault I Ride. Did. We have some great video on that ride. We'll also be talking to some business leaders about the executive bike ride in downtown Des Moines. We'll also be participating in the silent riding. We'll show you some tips on safe night riding. Well, tell me a little bit more about this executive ride. Okay. Got it. I have the technology now. Getting ready for the big ride, we're using the B-cycle bikes, and you've got to have a nice little pass to get on uh, those bikes. Real simple to activate. Pull the bike out. It's uh, set up with a nice basket so you can carry things. The mayor is always really busy and he was running a titch late, so I had to go meet him in his parking spots. This particular bike ride does include a lot of business leaders throughout the central Iowa area sharing ideas on health and wellness and what's worked and what's not worked in their particular company. Uh, realizing that the benefit of health and wellness really extends into their entire culture. So it helps their employees feel better, be healthier, keep health insurance costs lower, and helps Iowans just become a healthier, uh, healthier state. And it's so much fun, too. You may recall a few of you that uh, participated in a uh, discussion kind of like this about six or seven years ago when we brought in the League of American Bicyclist director. And we talked to cities about city planners and city um, elected officials about how to create bike plans, master bike plans for the cities. And it was a group about like this, and we had a great discussion, and since that discussion, Des Moines has a master bike plan, Urbandale has one, West Des Moines, you know, they're all starting to get their master bike plans pulled together and make it easy for people to bike on the streets. And so, uh, while we have a great trail system, we also need to think about when people want to go to work, we have to be able to get them to work, you know, by bike. This is a new program that we're doing for Bike Month this year. You can go to bikemonthiowa.com. Well, I love Bike Month, and I got my passport this year, and the one thing that I love about it is that it's almost like a list of all the bike events that are coming up. And, of course, you do get to win if you fill out your passport and show up to enough of these events. Well, everybody likes to win. There's no doubt about that. So the passports work real well. You get a stamp at every event that you uh, go to, and the more stamps you get, the better your odds at winning. Well, what an honor it had to have been to ride with the mayor of Des Moines. Well, Mayor County's done a good job of bringing cycling into the forefront to make Des Moines, Iowa a cycling-friendly community. 
and uh, we're grateful for all the work that he and his staff have done. Does he ever say to you, Forrest, when we go out together, more people know you than they do me? I think more people know, know Mayor County than know Forrest George Wright. <laughs> Well, it looks like you even got a bag of goodies. Goodie bag. Delicious lunch, wonderful company, and a bag of good stuff from Meredith Corporation. It doesn't get any better than this. Have a seat. Thanks for uh, chatting with oh, me today. Thank you. Big discussion in there. A lot of people. Um, it was a good night. Yeah. Asking good questions. Some people were a little uh, more encouraged by the right. thought of going to a quiet street. And there were quite a few people worked up in various ways. I want to be able to ride my bike to work. We are expecting between 10 and 100. <laughs> so there's oh. really no way to know how many people are going to show up at a sure. neighborhood meeting. We're here to talk about specific concepts along this corridor. So I want to make sure that we can keep this under control. We can have a civil discussion. Well, this is not your first rodeo in this kind of no. work. I mean, you've done this all over the country. That's right, and in several other countries. Oh, really? Yeah. Our uh, our company, Alta Planning and Design, is really the kind of leading consultant that specializes in bicycle and pedestrian projects. I mean, We've, this is this your creation or of your? No, I'm one of the I'm one of the owners. Wow. There are five owners. We have about 100 staff in uh, about 40 offices. What's been like one of your ideal projects that you've done? Actually, Des Moines, we did the bike master plan for Des Moines, and it was a lot of fun for several reasons, because there are great people mm -hmm. that are really passionate about cycling and active transportation in Iowa in general and in Des Moines in particular. When were bicycle lanes needed? You know what? Well, yeah, that's a great question. I don't know when the first bike lanes were created, but uh, I was in the Quad Cities uh, over on the Mississippi a couple of weeks ago and there was a photograph that somebody showed me from 1903 mm -hmm. on that with a whole horde of people leaving the arsenal um, by bike. Cycling actually has been a really important part of transportation mm -hmm. in the U.S. for uh, well over 100 years. And now we're attempting to bring it back and to make it right. um, Right. Uh, more noticed here. There are, is a actually a really large percentage, a growing percentage of people that would like to use bikes for mm -hmm. transportation. And why don't they? Well, a big chunk of it is they don't feel safe mm -hmm. on the road. What we're doing and talking about tonight is a quiet street. Um, some cities call them bike boulevards or neighborhood greenways. And, but it's really not just a bicycle facility. We're trying to create a place where you can tell your kid, go play in the street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, you know, really a place I that is that every <laughs> yeah, comfortable to walk across to visit your neighbor right. or come down to the church where we're meeting tonight or, mm -hmm. you know, go to the grocery store uh, to get around, whether it's walking or riding a bike and really feeling safe on the street. So there's this big percentage of the population that would love to be able to get around and take uh, advantage of the benefits of bicycling. Uh, as a kind of everyday transportation. So why bicycles? You know, I mean, you, you could, I suppose you could say, you know, it's good for the environment, but you know, what's the main goal? Why are you trying to get more people on bikes? Well, there are a whole bunch of reasons, but uh, one of the really popular reasons right now is health, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a really efficient way to get around. Mm -hmm. They're relatively fast for short trips. Most trips, I can't remember the percentages right now, but like, you know, 80% of the trips that people take during the day are less than two miles. Oh, sure, to the grocery store or yeah. to so get a movie or something. Most people have one bike or right. two or something like that, and they might spend three or four hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and it'll last uh, ten years. My my nicest bike is uh, 25 or 30 years old now. I've rebuilt wow. it a couple of times. And it costs a little bit to rebuild, but generally it's really pretty mm -hmm. cheap. So what's it cost right now to fill that car is fifty or seventy dollars, right. and uh, you well, know, even you my might Prius, only do, you know, I mean that's good on gas, but still, it only gets fifty miles. <laughs> yeah, per gallon, right. right. I mean, there's right. no way we shouldn't be getting hundred miles per yeah. gallon on yeah. common cars sure. right now. And you'll be working with us for a while. I hope so. We actually just have this one tiny little contract right now uh, to help with this uh, quiet street project mm -hmm. in South Des Moines. Um, part of the city uh, but yeah I'd love to come back 
be a lot of fun. Thank you for sharing. And thank you yeah. for being here and on all the work that you do in the world. It's good to meet oh, you. Thank you very Take much. Care. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. For those of you who don't know, I'm Scott Sumter. I run the BikeIowa.com website. This is part of the uh, Bike Month activities. This is the eighth ride of silence that we've held in the Des Moines area. Thanks for coming. We'll head out. We'll all line up along this, along East Sixth here. I'm going to lead out the ride. It started in 2003 by a guy named Chris Phelan in Dallas, Texas, when his buddy got hit by a, a passing bus. He got hit in the shoulder by a mirror, killed him. During the funeral, him and a few buddies started talking about having a ride for their friend. And within like four days, they had sent out emails. And this is 2003, so kind of before Facebook, before Twitter. They had over a thousand people show up on that ride in Dallas. And they kind of thought that was a good idea. They created a website, kind of got things going. and. Here we are uh, 10 years later, and you've got, you know, 300 plus rides all across the continents. Um, it, it's, it's good to see. Forrest, I'm loving the new bike. Good. And now I'm starting to ride later and later, so I really need some help figuring out how to ride at night safely. Visibility is very important. Obviously, we want you to be safe because you're gonna have fun if you're safe. Yes. You're not gonna ride your bike if you don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a couple things to think about. Number one, even when you're riding during the daylight, visibility is a really big issue. That's why so many cycling clothes are bright colors. Mm -hmm. This is called screaming yellow because it screams it that you're out there and you wanna be seen. But what's really great about this particular jacket is at night, it has the silver reflectivity and the silver piping wow. on the back. Okay. So if a car headlight hits that, it reflects back. It's very visible at night. If you're doing night riding uh, and you want to just get something mm -hmm. extra to give you that visibility, we have these really great vests here. Oh, right. And the vest has reflectivity on it, on the front, on the back, on the sides, the top, the bottom. So it's very reflective. This happens to be made of mesh. So if it's a warm summer. day, yep. it's still Perfect. gonna be comfortable. It's still gonna be cool. I get a lot of use out of that. There's a lot of great things too for reflectivity. We we'll make sure that your bicycle is equipped with a rear reflector, okay. a front reflector, wheel reflectors and then you can also add reflectors to your legs by putting these velcro leg straps around your bottom of your leg here and that's going to be extra visible as it goes up and down as you're pedaling oh, I see. another thing we can do too is that we can add this reflective tape to either the crank arm or to the uh, rims okay. of the bicycle we can add it to the frame of the bicycle so at night you're very very visible but the most important thing if you're doing real night riding is to get a really great set of lights. Okay. Let me get Biff for you and I'm going to have him show you some of the different options yeah, out there. Yeah, that'd be great. Hey, Thanks. Biff. Oh, hey, Biff. Hey, Suzette. So we're starting to do some yeah, night riding. Absolutely. Well, I get two questions all the time. One is, what's the difference in the colors, okay. the red and the white? Red is going to be for your tail light. That's going to go on the back. Okay. It's a great to be seen light, something where even if it's not dark out, throw it on. So people know they're coming up behind you. Exactly. Not to have to get out of the way. Exactly. Awesome. Uh, white is going to be your front light, your headlight. Now, the other question I get all the time is, why is there $25 lights and why is there $250 lights? The biggest difference is we go up in prices, we're gonna get a lot brighter, but also we're gonna go from battery operated to rechargeable. Okay. We turn on something like this guy here, mm -hmm. it's about like a headlight for a car. Wow. It's a 500 lumen light. Most cars put out about 800 lumens, so we're getting very bright there. It is very bright. <laughs> Another great thing to do is if you're gonna do a battery operated light is bring some extra batteries with you. Throw them in your seat pack and that way if you get caught at oh, night that's without a, great a light, idea. you're safe. Right. And it's not like you have to spend extra money on that. You've got some extra batteries. You're going to need them at some point. Just yeah. put them on your bike. Take them out of the remote control. That's right. <laughs> Such a better use of batteries, right? Exactly. Okay, so I need my reflectors, um, probably some ankle straps. I want to get one of these vests. Best. And if I, you know, want to really upgrade, I'll get one of these. Go but the a jacket. headlight as well and some, some lights. I just, Perfect. I think I've got it all. You Thanks got for it. keeping me safe. You betcha. Well, I'm here with Carl Voss from the Bike Collective to talk about the B-Cycle, the bike rental in Des Moines here. Thank you for showing up and, and uh, sharing everything you know. 
Well, actually, this is a little bit different than bike rental. This is actually called bike sharing. And so the difference between bike sharing and bike rental is that you can uh, check out one of our bikes at any of the stations. You don't need to return it to the same station. So uh, we're at 13th and Grand right now. If you want to ride from here to Court Avenue, you can check out a bike here and, and ride down to Court Avenue. You could actually bring that bike late, later to the same location or you can walk back or however you need to get about town. So bike sharing bikes are ideal for um, short trips, for errands. They're, they're also ideal for people who are becoming multimodal. That's a new term for Iowans, but imagine you can um, ride the DART public bus to downtown Des Moines. And then there's a, a, a new B-cycle station right outside DART, and you can take that um, B-cycle bike for your last mile or half mile to your office. So um, you've uh, saved some transportation dollars by using the bike to complete your commute and also get a little exercise yeah, out of it. Definitely. So uh, we have an employee, from example, for principal who is um, riding DART downtown and it takes him four minutes to get from uh, DART to the principal building. And, uh, you know, he, he probably wouldn't walk that distance, but, but that's just how, how fast it happens. And it's super easy, it looks like, too, because you have, um, you can pull up and there's gonna be bike racks somewhere, um, convenient, and then you've got a bike lock. Right, so, so if there's not a, a um, B station nearby, there's um, a, a cable and lock with each bike. There's um, a bell with each bike. Each bike um, has a skirt guard, so if a woman has a skirt or a long coat, doesn't have to worry about getting the get it caught right here. Yeah. Clothing greasy, right. Uh, there's a, a, a chain guard on all the bikes. The, uh, Seats adjust incredibly easily from it and fit anyone from five foot two to six foot four. Wow. So, um, now how did this idea evolve here in Des Moines? I've seen it in other cities, but now we, of course, being so progressive, now we have it. Well, we were the fifth city in the U.S. to have a bike share program. Uh, we are certainly not the largest. Um, I think Manhattan now has, and Brooklyn have 6,000 bikes on the street, and we have uh, 37 bikes, but it does Getting scale there. well for Des Moines. It does. Well, let's say I want to check out this bike. I can clearly see it's locked in um, completely. How does that work? How do I get it to, to be mine for the day? Sure. Well, if you're an annual member, it's really easy. Uh, you just walk up with your membership card, press the silver button on the dock that has a bike in it, put your card on top of it, and pull out the bike. And you're good to go, just adjust the seat height. And you don't have to be an annual member, although it does seem that it would be worth your money, but, uh, with the price being 50 or 40 or $50, depending on when you purchase it. But if you want to get it out during the day, it's just as easy for one day or for one week by using your ATM card. Right, you can use your um, credit or debit card and check out a bike are using the card reader at, at the kiosk and and it knows that you have started a 24-hour pass and so you can use the card multiple times during the day to make as many trips as you'd like uh, no additional charge as long as you keep the trips under an hour i love this system i hope that more people get out there and use it thanks carl all right thank you very much This is our 10th year. Wow. Started in Austin 10 years ago with 150 people, and this year over 10,000 people will be the Urban Assault Ride around the country. And how many people here in Des Moines? Be over, just over 1,000 people. Now, how do you get, how does a, a town like Des Moines get uh, something like Urban Assault to show up and say, hey, let's do this? It proves time and time again that it's a town that loves bikes and beer. Now, it is, it's a race. Um, or is it more of a ride? Are there winners? It's There are winners, okay. but it's really, we give away better prizes for the people that show up in costume and having a ton of fun. Bam. Than
since you were in Alaska on your motorbike, I had to ask my friend Jim to ride along with me. He said, absolutely, but we are dressing as Batman and Robin and calling ourselves Team Dork Knight. I like Team Dork Knight, but I really thought that's what you wear all the time. That's really an outfit, okay. I think we're gonna take you down. <laughs> so you've, you've done this before then? Every year. As a group. Yeah. What? Well, not as a group. Jill and I did it the first year. Um, she couldn't go last year, so Clara and I did it last year. The first year Jill and I did, and then this is Lily's first time. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Do you have any tips that you can give uh, the new riders here? Don't crash. Okay. Um, you take yep. a note. Yep. You take a note. Make sure that you've got a, a decent plan so you're not backtracking. Okay. And uh, and do the, uh, the challenges as quick as possible. All right. That's where people get hung up. Well, I can tell you that I was not one of the first people in line. I decided to hold back and go in the third heat because it really wasn't about winning for me because I know that I'm a winner, right? You are a winner and, and or you're a chicken and you didn't want to compete. I don't know. I don't know which it really is. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of both. At the mystery stop, we get a clue for the second mystery stop plus a bee. You don't want to forget to get the bee. All right. Oh, we're supposed to find out. Oh, oh, we're, oh darn, we're supposed to find out. <laughs> Uh, where the next place is. Now our next challenge was um, quite difficult and as you can see we weren't the only Batman and Robin that showed up at the event. The other ones were imposters all that. You we were the real were. Batman and Robin. These challenges were far more difficult than they really look. We did make it through this particular event without any trouble. Look at the speed at which we ride. <laughs> <laughs> So what's with the tennis balls? Well, I had to throw the ball, and it had to go through this tiny little hole in a piece of cardboard, which my partner was holding. And of course, we finished. One of the best parts of the ride is that you get to go all over the city. So if you're from Des Moines, it's cool because you get to visit all the places that you recognize. And if you're not, you get to see the whole city. Now, this particular event was the hardest of the day. And I'm sure that I'm not the only one that had difficulties. Well, it looks like you're jousting actually here. But you know, we talked about the importance of balance. You really need to work on that just a little bit more. But how gracefully I fell off. I, yeah, I mean, that's like a 9.5, I would say. Well, I'm gonna try it again. Let's see what happens. Nope. Uh, that's about I'm a, done. That's <laughs> about a 6.0 there. That's, that's really weak. And look, I almost hurt someone else. <laughs> So let's let Jim have a try. Yeah, sometimes it takes a man to get the job done. I can appreciate that. So on to the next challenge. It's always a surprise what the next event's going to be. And this one, we had to strip down to our shorts and get into a swimming pool. It was so cold that day and a little bit rainy. You can't see it here, but I assure you, it was chilly. I was somewhere in Alaska and it was still warm up there. You should have been with me. Well, we decided to stay in Iowa and surf. Another challenge down. Here we go. Another bead earned. One more bead. You're on your way to success. This next event, they have bikes that I can ride all day long. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Go for Now, would you consider this a recumbent tricycle? I would call that a big wheel, and I remember what those were all about. That was a great, great machine. Do you realize they don't have brakes? You don't need brakes. You, you know, brakes just slow you down. You want to go fast. Boom. Another one bites the dust. Off to the finish line now. And was just as much fun as the entire event. There was people that I knew, people I didn't recognize, and people that I got to meet for the very first time. It's amazing though, you know, how many bike people there are out there and the different things they enjoy. It is a fun time. We had bike people and we had dancers. Everyone keeps calling them bees, but uh, we got this. Okay, and, how did I is, get this? this? Is, uh, and you got that too. I know, how am I supposed to carry this if I'm riding a fancy <laughs> road bike? Well, today we learned a lot about street planning for bicycles, and I feel safe riding at night, so I have to get out there and find some uh, moonlight rides. Well, there's the Moonlight Classic. There's also the rides on the High Trestle Trail Bridge. 
during full moon that are fun rides you'd enjoy those. And impressive too. Very nice. Now how is the B-Cycle ride? Well it's so good, in fact I've been working on a kiosk design here, let me run it by you. Okay. When you finish with the B-Cycle, you slide it in, you lock it up, and I'm thinking then you can take your card, swipe the kiosk next okay. to it, get a free piece of rhubarb pie. Good idea? It's quite the idea, Forrest. It's quite the idea. I liked it. <laughs> I love it. And next week you will love it when we go out to the Raccoon River Valley Trail where we talk to a family who finds a unique answer to their writing question. Check us out on Facebook and our webpage. And get on out there. And become bike people. Hi guys, we want you to share with us how you see the world through two wheels. Give us a scoop on your favorite trails, share your ride pictures or videos. Send an email to info at bikepeople.tv with any questions or information you'd like to share with all the other bike people out there. Well the scoop I'm hoping somebody shares is a scoop of vanilla ice cream on a big piece of pie. We're talking about over the internet, like on Facebook for us. Well, can we at least have a piece of pie, like a picture of a piece of pie on there? Depending on the subject matter, we may even post it on our Facebook page, our website, or maybe even on TV. Now remember, this is a family show, but you know, maybe we could get like recipes for rhubarb pie. In fact, somebody could tell me where I could go out and pick up a piece of rhubarb pie. You are hopeless. Encourageable. Bike People is brought to you in part by The Des Moines Bicycle Collective promotes bicycling as a means of active transportation, wellness, and recreation in central Iowa. The Iowa Natural Heritage Foundation, working to protect and restore Iowa's land, water, and wildlife. Bike Iowa, your source for Iowa bicycle rides, events, and news, connecting cycling with Iowa community since 2001. Thanks for watching Bike People. For more about us, like our Facebook page and check out our website at www.bikepeople.tv and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Bike People TV, all one word for behind the scenes looks.